By the side of a lake, one of the five Great Lakes, there is a city, Toronto. Beyond lies a big country, a big province, Ontario. From its eastern border, beyond where the waters of the Great Lakes flow into the St. Lawrence, it thrusts deep into the heart of the continent, while in the north, it touches the shores of Hudson Bay. From the sophistication of big city life to the quiet of a remote lake, fishing that once was vital for the survival of the early settlers today can be enjoyed by sportsmen from all over the world. Lake trout, pickerel, great northern pike, bass, whitefish, speckled trout, and muscalunge. On and around these waters, there is a unique resort playground. Think of Ontario and you think of water quiet streams that meander through the summer land, canals that seem to have been made for those who love boats, and lakes and islands and an ever-changing shoreline, for this is the lake of the woods. And as the cities grow, thrusting ever deeper into the countryside, places of refuge become ever more important. Just such a refuge is Algonquin Park, where man may enter but may not dominate. Because of the foresight of an earlier generation, a boy today can slice the water with his paddle and discover the silence of an unchanging world. Here, the native animals of Canada run free, while elsewhere in the province, you will discover these kings roaming on a safari farm, allowing the spectator a thrilling view from the safety of a car. From lions to a polar bear, the Polar Bear Express, which travels to one of the most northern parts of Ontario, paralleling a trail used by the early explorers to the Arctic tidewaters of James Bay at Moosonee. Train arrival is an important event at Moosonee. It brings supplies, it brings equipment and mail, and it brings people. To some, this may be the end of the line, but to others, it is the beginning of a vast and mysterious frontier, raw, tough, and solitary. The history of Ontario is the story of men and women who had faith in this land. Close to Georgian Bay, the Jesuits in the early 17th century established a mission to the Huron Indians, the first white settlement in Ontario. St. Marie among the Hurons has been rebuilt, and here history lives. History and traditions, as can be discovered at Upper Canada Village, are important to any nation, for they provide a sense of continuity, a feeling of strength. Along the river from Upper Canada Village is another reminder of the past, Fort Henry.
special occasions, the sunset ceremony is performed by summer students as the flag is lowered over the historic fort. But while spectators may watch this pageantry in quiet fascination, crowds in other places are not always so silent. watches for its approaching shadow over the water. The Indians welcomed this wind too. They called it Minwanamut. And where the air was still, they used another word, Agawa, a sheltered place. In this way was Algoma's Agawa Canyon named. Rugged and untamed, and yet only a half day's journey on the railway line from Sault Ste. Marie. And still, this is Ontario, at Thunder Bay, the end of the Great Lakes Waterway, the heart of the continent, where timber and the mines have formed the legends and written the history. Ontario's Northland provided inspiration for the famed Group of Seven painters. At the McMichael Gallery can be seen the greatest single collection of the artist's paintings. But while the McMichael Collection recreates the beauty of Ontario, at the Stratford Festival Theatre, it is Elizabethan England that comes alive. said that Ottawa is one of the loveliest of the world's capitals. Standing above the river from which it derived its name, the somber Gothic style buildings, the shadowed memorials to the past, the traditions that provide the warmth of continuity, all combine with modern Ottawa to create a certain majesty. And a former capital, the small but elegant town of Niagara-on-the-Lake is today renowned for its annual Shaw Festival. Here the water is quiet and restrained, but a few miles upstream lies one of the great natural wonders of the world, Niagara Falls. But most important of all, Ontario is made up of people. Each has contributed something to the fabric of the province. Oh, 
landing module. This is ground control. Stand by for you. This is a beautiful land, the one hand touching the unyielding north, almost to the roof of the world, the other hand touching the south, and between the two, in delicate balance, Ontario. Ontario.